Uh, what are the crimes uh, uh, which fall under the, the jurisdiction uh, of the court? In 1998, the state who are here in blue decided that there are three crimes who are not just national problems. These three crimes are concerned for the global community. They are genocide, who is the extermination of the group, crimes against humanity, who is a widespread or systematic attack against civilian population, and war crimes. These three crimes will be the, for the international community as a whole, and the commitment is to prosecute these crimes. When they don't, the court will intervene. Mm -hmm. So in this sense, the, in 1998, the decision was to create a global justice system, a real global justice system, because when the law is not implemented by the state, the court will do it. Mm -hmm. and, and so we have these three crimes, genocide, uh, crimes against humanity, and, and war crimes. Could you give us a quick definition of what is meant by these three notions? Okay. Genocide is, is a crime who was established in 1948 in the Genocide mm -hmm. Convention. The war was established by Rafael Lemkin, who was a lawyer, and basically was trying to define a new term, what happened in the Second World War. And so genocide is a crime of the extermination of a group that could be, or a part of the group, could be for religious reasons, for ethnic reasons, for other reasons, but that's the concept, this, the extermination of a group. Crime against humanity is not targeted one group, it's any widespread or systematic attack against civilian population. That's crime against humanity. In the context of war or in no any war. kind of context? No, we don't need a war mm -hmm. to man to crime against humanity. Then you have a, uh, war crimes, and then yes, the war crimes are committed during wars. Okay, and, and the, the, the scope of this uh, uh, jurisdiction for the court, I mean, how universal and how wide is it? And in terms of uh, time framework, what's the time framework for this uh, jurisdiction? The, yeah, the, this idea, in fact, the first time we have an international court was Nuremberg. Nuremberg was the first time. And in 1948, when the world decided to adopt the Convention on Genocide, the Convention mentioned the need to create an international criminal court. But the Cold War affect this idea, could not start. But in 1993, after the Cold War, at the end of the Cold War, the Balkans had this conflict. And then Europe was reacting. And then the UN Security Council created a special court, a Hoc Tribunal for Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. And in 1994, was a genocide in Rwanda. Yeah. So the court, the world cannot ignore this, geno this sec genocide. So they created a second tribunal for Rwanda. And this created the momentum and paved the way in 1998 to create the permanent court, the ICC. Is a, is a, is a, that's why it's connected with your idea on these uh, lectures. It's the, it's, ICC is not for one case, it's not for one country. It's a permanent system for the future. Yeah. It's based in a treaty, so the country has to ratify the treaty to, to include the court. And the treaty required at least 60 countries were defined before they started. Okay. And people were saying, okay, 60 countries would take at least 20 years. But uh, interestingly, in a few years, and this map could show you how fast it was. The timeline here begins in 1998. 1998, and then you, in dark blue, you will see the country who started to ratify the treaty. The first was, was Senegal, then Italy, and then very soon other countries were joining them. And in July 1, 2002, more than 60 countries ratified the treaty. But the, the court was established in 2002. The, the, that, the treaty was adopted in 1998. So then? July 1, 2002, 60 countries ratified the treaty. Okay. And then the beginning of the operations. Then okay. the judges were uh, swinging was on March 2003. Mm -hmm. I was a prosecutor appointed in June 2003. And then we started operations. Yes. And from those days, we're doing different cases of investigation, but basically, the ratification of the treaty was keep growing, and you will see now where we are. You will see basically which are the regions who are leading this process. You will see basically they are the regions where the crime occurred. Mm -hmm. So Europe is one of the leading regions because Europe suffered these crimes. South America, as you see, Europe and South, West Europe and South America are complete, are 100%. Because these are the regions who suffer. Yes. And then you're, you're referring to the dictatorships in the 70s in Latin America and so on. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All the crimes in the, in the the 40s. Yes. In Europe, in 70s, in in South America, and then you have a, a, mo most of the Africa 
the, the non-Arab Africa is also in the court. Uh, and the Arab countries are coming now. In fact, with this Arab Spring, yes. what's happening, Tunisia is coming, Egypt is coming, so they are also coming. So, and then you have Australia and New Zealand. The, the area with less countries is uh, Asia, so, but it's coming. Japan and South Korea, Mongolia are there, Malaysia is coming, Philippines is coming. And uh, of course the big countries, the countries who have strong armies like uh, Russia, China, US or India, they are not using the law to protect themselves, so mm -hmm. they, is, they are not inside yet. Yes. But it's a, in my eight years as a prosecutor I see a huge change because at the beginning there was much more fear or hate against the court, and now it's different. In the Libya situation, the Security Council referred the case unanimously, so 15 votes, including China, Russia, India, US, countries who are not members, and they agree. So, so when you started your job eight years ago, you felt there, were, that there was a lot of suspicion towards the court? Oh, yeah. It was a and what was, uh, what, was, wh what was the reason uh, for this hostility? Come on. This, uh, flag, currency, and criminal justice are the basic idea of sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So this idea to have an international criminal court was uh, very dangerous for many people because those countries would send troops outside, they, they were afraid. Yeah. So they were afraid because basically in Rome, the agreement was to have a court who is totally dependent on the Security Council. But in Rome, the state decided, the state who voted in favor, 120 states, decided to have an independent court doing justice, no political mm -hmm. decisions. And that was huge. Change. Uh, and yet, despite this initial, uh, uh, you know, skepticism or, or suspicion, uh, as you mentioned, ratification went very fast. Yeah. So how do no, you the, the how, how do you explain this? Because the idea is right. It's the mm -hmm. right idea for the, the right time. Mm -hmm. So this this is the moment. Yeah. We need that. We are much more connected now. So UN University is showing that you are yes. connecting people around the world. Mm -hmm. So we are building one. The technology is allowing us to live in one community, mm -hmm. and then we need we need global institutions. UN is good, but UN main goal was to avoid wars, and in fact, in particular, wars between the big countries. Avoid a third world war, and it's working. However, we need more. We need to stop other type of wars because no one wants wars. No one wants massive atrocities. Yes. So, so you, uh, you you just mentioned at the beginning of the conversation Nuremberg. So, so there is, I guess, a continuum between Nuremberg, Tokyo, former Yugoslavia, Rwanda. So, what is the the normative or legal link between the 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 the, the, the court and these uh, previous jurisdictions, which were more or less ad hoc and limited yeah. jurisdictions? No, I think that was just testing idea. Yes. So we're implementing idea after conflict for a particular conflict. That's why the ICC is a much more ambitious project. Mm -hmm. It's not just about one case. It's used a lot to manage conflict in the world. That is a That's new, it, yes. the new idea. Yeah. And it, it, it's a normal idea yeah. inside the countries. Mm -hmm. So the countries manage violence through the law and judges. Yeah. But doing the same at the global level is new yeah. and it's complicated. But it's and, 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 uh, and at the very core of this, of the philosophy and of the functioning of the of the court, you have this notion of of complementarity. So tell us a bit about it. There we go. That's all the idea. The, the, the dilemma of the world today is we need global governance, but we will not have global government. That dilemma. So how to manage that? And that's what the ICC is such interesting because you see, there is a coalition of states from different parts of the world with the same idea, the idea could not, the world cannot allow to this type of crimes. So the commitment of the state is to, they do, they will do investigation and prosecutions. Mm -hmm. But if they don't, the ICC will jump automatically. And the state have, the, even the head of states have no immunity. So it's a complete different scenario. It's not a treaty which I can decide to comply or not comply. Mm -hmm. When the country is not complying, they yeah. call champ on it. So when the justice system is failing the people of a given country, if the country is a, is a member of, of the treaty, then you can jump in mm -hmm. and take action. Yeah. But I mean, does it mean that uh, your principal customers, in a way, are going to be countries from developing countries, or, or you know, uh, people from de developing countries, or people from failed states? Well, you assume, I hope you're right, that the, the countries more developed will not commit genocide. I mm -hmm. hope you're right. Yeah, I mean, we have, it's an assumption. Yeah. Yes, I hope you're right. Mm -hmm. No, But in any case, the concept is we intervene when there are crimes against humanity, 
and at the same time they are not sharing national proceedings. For mm -hmm. instance, in Colombia, they have crimes against humanity and war crimes. However, they are conducting national proceedings. Mm -hmm. In Congo, they have crimes, but they cannot do the proceedings. So we did it. So depend on the mm -hmm. cases. But the concept is, it's a model in which all the states at the end will be playing the same level. Yeah because we're pushing them to go higher, and that is a good model. And you are right, actually, you know, may maybe my assumption is wrong, because you can totally imagine developed countries in which suddenly a government uh, takes over and is an authoritarian government, and then ends up uh, you know, doing terrible things and not being willing to... Uh, or decide to kill people in other places. Yeah, after it happened in Germany in, in Japan. Yeah. So absolutely. So, so in, in terms of, uh, I mean, in concrete terms, how does the code function? I mean, uh, how does the code start, start for instance, it, it's it's work on crimes. I mean, how does it happen? I mean, the, you the prosecution office uh, has to select the situations to investigate. Mm -hmm. So when we arrived, it was in the middle of the Iraq conflict. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, hundreds of letters urging me to open a case in Iraq. So you, you receive letters? Yes. That's we, how we, you we start something? We, we can receive letters from many for any city in the world. It's a teacher in Mongolia who is sending us letters with her students all the time. That's great, mm -hmm. because people now have a reference on justice. And it's directly addressed to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we have an office, a part of the office receives these letters, and we explain, we, come, we, we give an explanation what we do. So basically, we had to select the first situation to investigate, and people were asking us to intervene in Iraq. But as you see, in Iraq it's not blue. Iraq is a country who is not ratifying the treaty. So we cannot do that. And the US is not doing neither. So we, we, I have no jurisdiction in Iraq. Mm -hmm. So we're saying, okay, we have to explain very quickly that we have nothing to do with Iraq. But then we have to explain where we will go. And in our jurisdiction, the worst crimes in those days were committed in Colombia and in Congo. Mm -hmm. And, and these two countries are yes, members. Yes, and these two countries are members. So in my treaty jurisdiction, the worst crimes were committed in Combi, Colombia and DRC Congo. So, but in Colombia, they were doing national proceedings, so I should not intervene. So the obvious, the obvious election was DRC Congo. And the tension was, okay, this independent prosecutor office was the biggest discussion in Rome. The uh, U.S. did not sign the treaty because the prosecutor was independent and they were thinking it would be a frivolous prosecution or a, a rogue prosecutor. So in order to avoid this perception and increase the cooperation, what we did in September 2003, in the first asking of the parties, we went there and I say publicly that uh, I conclude that Congo should be open an investigation in Congo. However, I, before I start the investigation using my, my independent powers, I invite Congo to refer the case to us. Mm -hmm. So the state parties can refer case to the court. So I ask Congo to do it. And interestingly, because I did that, then Ugandan lawyers came to my office. Mm -hmm. explained to me that uh, Uganda was not committing grants in Congo. I said, okay, that's important. But in the meantime, you have the Lord Resident Army in, Kong, in Uganda. Lord Resident Army is a group conducted by Joseph Kony, who was abducting more than 20,000 children in, in Uganda, in northern Uganda. They forced them to kill their parents to destroy the relationship with the community, and they have this, this armed group. So I invite them to refer the case of the LRA, mm -hmm. or the situation in Uganda. And then they did it. And uh, they, they, the government wanted to refer the Uganda situation, so, and then the Congo referred to Uganda, the Congo situation. So we started with these two cases. Yeah. And after that, change, show, showing how fast the world is changing, uh, the Commission of Inquiry produced a report on Darfur, and the Security Council started to discuss what to do. And then uh, even U.S. agreed that the court was up and running, doing two cases. They should not open a, a special court, and then they accepted to give the case to the ICC. So in just two years, the ICC and the Security Council were connected, showing this idea, you know? Mm -hmm. Without changing the Security Council rules, you change the dynamic of the Security Council because the uh, two permanent members, as France and UK, are in the seat, are in the Security Council, and they are also members of the, of the court. Of yes. the court, so France and UK lead, led this effort to do justice there, and then they have immediately nine votes. 
because there are nine, in those days were nine state parties there. Today are ten state parties in the Security Council. So mm. immediately you get majority. So it's a complete change in dynamic. So mm. we received Darfur, and this is where we start this case. Then the President of the African Republic, uh, motivated by NGO, FIDH from France, they were pushing and they referred the case of the Central African Republic. And after that, the next case was Kenya. In Kenya, you know, was this post-electoral violence in Kenya. And then we decided to open a case in Kenya. I went to Kenya, explained to the President Kibaki, look, I will decide to start the case. You can refer the case to me, if not I'm doing it alone, myself. Mm -hmm. And the president said, look, I cannot refer the case to you, but I would support your effort. So we opened Kenya. And after that, this year, the uh, Security Council referred Libya case. And then we are working on Libya. And now we are going to request authorization to open a new case in Cote d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. So these are the six situations we are investigating. And in, yes. in addition, what we have, we conduct what the law say, a preliminary examination, who is the analysis is we are analyzed if a situation should be open or not, mm -hmm. where we have a, we are evaluating situations in Honduras, Colombia, in South America, we are evaluating situation in 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 Nigeria, um, Guinea, and Cote d'Ivoire, and we go, we are requesting we are going to request open Cote d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. We are uh, evaluating what happened in Georgia and um, Afghanistan, who is also state party, and finally and Korea. We are no, no, uh, South Korea, Korea because South in Korea. South Korea, North Korea, allegedly North Korea uh, torpedo a ship uh, not in South Korea in the in the sea mm -hmm. of South Korea, and also it was a bombing in a, in Iceland yes. belonging mm -hmm. to South Korea. So we are so you could be handling this. I case. am evaluating if we should mm -hmm. open or not investigation in this case, and lastly we have also checking the condition of jurisdiction of the Palestine case because mm -hmm. Palestine came to my office accepting jurisdiction. So we're evaluating if this, if Palestine has capacity to provide jurisdiction to SEC. Mm -hmm. So, so we are doing a specific investigation in six situations, but mm -hmm. we are also evaluating if we should intervene or not in nine situations. Because, mm -hmm. and that's important because the most important part of the court is not what the case in court who are important. It's, but it's the impact of the case in court mm -hmm. because because we have this global reach. One case in court is. Is make is changing the situation in at least 115 countries who are members of the treaty because it has a global impact. Exactly. And absolutely. Uh, you, 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 just a question. You, you mentioned uh, 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 that Congo and Colombia were the two cases that you have had to, to deal with. Uh, what do you do, for instance, if you have a country uh, which is uh, a member of the treaty yeah. and the, the, the country tells you, well, you know, uh, don't worry, we are handling the matter. Uh, and, no, and suddenly yeah. you, you, you feel not very convinced that uh, the matter is, is truly uh, being handled. Is there something that you can do about it? No, the issue is we are not checking intentions. We are checking the existence of national proceedings. Okay. When there and that's what you mean by evaluation? Yes. Mm -hmm. We evaluate first if there are crimes yes. mm -hmm. and there if there are genuine proceedings. Mm -hmm. That is the preliminary examination. So here is in yellow, the country where we are evaluating. In round yellow, the, the countries in Europe yeah. are those countries who are involved in Afghanistan. And, and so if you, if you find out that, yes, a crime did take place, and two, well, no, in fact, the proceedings are not really satisfactory, they then you get yeah. involved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so in terms of these uh, cases being prosecuted, six of them, you mentioned Congo, Colombia, Darfur, Kenya, Libya, and... Cong 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 Congo, Uganda. Uganda, Uganda. yes, yes. Congo, yes. Uganda, Uganda. Uh, Darfur. Cong Central African Republic, mm -hmm. Kenya, and Libya. Yeah. So, uh, how does the the, 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 the prosecution w work? I mean, what's the, the mechanism? What's the, the after we select the situation? And so, in most of the cases, okay, when the ca when the country refer the case, we can start the investigation. Mm -hmm. When security country refer the case, the same. But when we decide to open investigation, we have to request authorization to the pretrial chamber, and that was the case in Kenya. So Kenya was the first case in where the office of the prosecutor opened the investigation using its own independent powers, and then was a check-in on the Kenya. You don't necessarily have to go through a country and through the Security Council to really uh, take a, a case on board. You can do it out of your own power. Yeah, yes. that's the treaty, that's the, uh, the agreement. The, okay. the, the states yeah. agree, 
that the court will decide independently mm -hmm. and they will support whenever or whatever the court decides to act. Mm -hmm. What is the relationship between the, the, the council and the court? Because, of course, the, the Security Council is a very, very important organ. Uh, you, you mentioned that uh, in a few cases he, it has referred to you in a number of, uh, of, of situations. So uh, tell us a bit about this relationship between the, the council and, and, and the court. I think the, the relation between the Security Council and the court is showing the evolution of the court. I remember the day of Masui Ning, on 16th of June 2003, I was debating with my ex advisor on international relations how we can establish a relation to receive a referral from the Security Council. Because I was thinking, okay, that would be the most institutional way to work, connecting security of the world with the justice in the world. Yeah. And she told me, look, in this situation, with the hostility against the ICC by big states, including the Bush administration, it would be impossible. So basically, she said, you will be nine years as a prosecutor. In your prosecutor life, you will see no referral. She was right. I was wrong. However, two years later, two years later, in March 2003, Security Council referred our full case. Mm -hmm. And they, they debate for three months to do it or not to do it. And at the end, 11 votes in favor, four abstentions, they accepted and referred the case to SEC. And, and, and why such a decision of referring to you this case? Why? Oh, yes. Because it was a commission of inquiry showing the, the crimes committee in Darfur was mm -hmm. people requesting justice and then the, I remember the American ambassador saying the court is up and running. So we should and, and, and why do you accept that. And why do you say that uh, this evolving relationship between the council and the court is an indication of the evolving importance? Because what I say is, at the beginning was zero chances. Just in two years, we received a referral, 11 votes. Now, this year, in February, Security Council debated for one day, and they refer the case of Libya to the ICC with no hesitation. 15 countries vote, including China, Russia, US, India, and Lebanon, none of the parties. So what I see is an evolution. All the countries now mm -hmm. accept no debate. ICC became a normal okay. part of international institutions. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing. Easy, they look easy, but it was incredibly difficult to achieve. Mm -hmm. and, when, and when the council refers a case to you, you have no choice, you have to take it on board and... No, 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 we have a choice. Because oh, you have a choice. Because I have to apply the law, and so, for instance... You have to assess whether or not it... Exactly yeah. the same. I yes. have to assess the existence okay. of national proceedings, or the, first the crimes, proceedings, gravity of the crimes, and then inter yes. justice. And then you make a, a qualification. And the, with this, I make a judgment, and then yeah. I move. Yes. Okay. I, I don't need to go to the judges mm -hmm. when I receive the cancer referral, mm -hmm. but I have to do it. It is your responsibility. Yeah, to conduct this analysis. Mm -hmm. And when I present the case to the judge, the judge can review all these elements of the competence. Of the and and to, to make this judgment, which is an incredibly important judgment, mm -hmm. I mean, how do, do you have a team? I mean, how yeah, does it have, work? We have a team of 300 people. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, people with experience in lawyers in court, but also we have a... 150 people who experience on investigations, and then I have a group of people with experience in international relations, and in this area we have a group of people reviewing this, the conditions of these situations. Mm -hmm. Because it's an incre incredibly important moment. Uh, everything is important in the court. Absolutely. Yeah. So for, for, the, for the cases which are now on your, on your desk, the six cases, how is it uh, progressing? How is it going? So what we, the first, after we decide to open the investigation, <coughs> The, the, our challenge is how to conduct the investigation. Because we conduct the investigation during ongoing conflict. So normally we cannot even meet publicly with the, with the witnesses. We have to, we do very careful security assessment, how to approach them, and then it's, we are very careful in, in not expose the life of our witness or our investigators. And we are very happy that in eight years of activities, no Staff was killed, no mm -hmm. witness was killed. So it's a dangerous job. It's an absolutely dangerous job. It's absolutely do they go to the country? I mean, how does we had, Yeah, normally in Congo and Uganda, we went to the country, we investigated there. In Darfur, it was even more difficult because in Darfur, we cannot, we cannot protect witness in Darfur. Mm -hmm. We cannot go to Darfur and protect the person. So, because we have a serious suspicion that the government was killing people. Yeah. So we decided to collect evidence on Darfur without going to Darfur. And then what so how do you do that? We, we check people who escape from Darfur. 
So we identified those who kept in some moment where some serious incident happened, and we tried to identify those who escaped. And then we collect 600 numbers, n names of people who are potential witnesses. So we screen them, and after we interview 100. And then we collect 100 witnesses who were victims or were eyewitness of the crimes. And you build the case. And we're outside that floor, and then we build the case. We also benefit from the collection of documents collected by the UN Commission of Inquiry, and so it helped yes. a lot to develop understanding of the system of crime, of crime committed there. So that's what we did in, in Darfur, and also what we did in Libya. In Libya also, we did not went to Libya. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in Kenya, we are almost similar. We are not going to Kenya to investigate. And, and, and when you send your investigators yeah. trying to do fine finding, do they go undercover? I mean, how does it work yeah, in yeah. terms we, of... Uh, we use different type of mechanism to protect the identity, to to mm -hmm. not expose people. So, but basically, we, we travel around the world looking for witness. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the in the in the Darfur case, we collect witness in 18 countries. In uh, in Libya, it was in 10 countries. So, so we that, that's a no, for us normal life. Yeah. So for, uh, for 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 this, there is no mechanism of of state consent for your investigators to to to, to go into the country and and look into the facts. It's not like in you know in in nuclear issues and so on. No, we. Okay, DRC, Uganda, Central African Republic, and Kenya all accept that we go in there, yeah. so no problem. Mm -hmm. in, in Sudan, it was more difficult. They accepted to go to see to check the national proceedings, not mm -hmm. the crimes. In Libya, we are not checking, so sometimes we are not going to the country. So we do it when mm -hmm. we do so. Any country we go, France or, or any country in the world, we inform the national authorities mm -hmm. and we inform them what we do, so it's authorization we re it's requested before. Mm -hmm. So. Each step for us in international investigation, that's why it's complicated too. No, no absolutely. And do you receive any, uh, I mean, do you, do you enter in partnership with UN colleagues for these kind of fact-finding missions? I mean, do you work with uh, other UN entities? Uh, you Depends on the situations, but uh, we receive a lot of support in terms of logistics for intern from UN. We have a good relation with, but uh, sometimes also we like to avoid a strong connection to avoid, for intern with the High Commission for Refugees, we are trying to avoid mm -hmm. strong connection to avoid the conflict for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are trying to be careful not to affect yes. the mandate of the other institutions. Yeah. At times, do you work with Interpol or? Uh, yeah, it depends. Yeah, yeah. It depends, Interpol yes. helps a lot in the Libya case, for instance. But yes. in each situation, you are trying to identify and assess individual responsibilities in a given yeah. uh, 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 crime. That's, that's the, that the overall goal. That's what we do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so in fact, that's what no one is doing because, for instance, uh, in Darfur, the UN agencies were focused on the humanitarian assistance. Yes. So they don't care who committed the crime because they had to just save the life of people. They were focused on on the on the conflict, on the violence, but not on the situation in the camps, on the rapes. This is not mm -hmm. the mandate. Uh, or negotiators were not doing justice. So our approach is different, and then we identify. Uh, the method used to commit the crimes in a different way. Example, when we uh, identify the name of Ahmed Haroun as the Minister of State for Interior responsible for the crimes committed in Darfur, no one knew who, no one knew him. Who, who he was? Yes, Haroun was basically the, the minister who coordinated the attacks. Mm -hmm. And we have evidence how he coordinated everything. He, he recruited people, he incited them to commit the crimes, he coordinated everything. But, uh, his name was not well known, even from the NGOs or the UN. When uh, Kofi Annan, as Secretary General, went to Darfur in 2004, you know who was the interpreter between Kofi Annan and the fool, the victims? Ahmed Haroun. Really? Yeah. And then Haroun was saying, uh, the victims were telling Kofi Annan, look, uh, as soon as women leave the camps, the soldiers rape them. And Harun translated, because there are not enough soldiers, mm -hmm. as soon as the women leave the camp, the women are raped. And then one journalist who was sp speaking Arabic say, no, you're misrelating that. So, but that's the type of problem, because uh, no UN organization has the mandate to identify how the crime were committed. This is our mandate, and that's what we are doing. And, what makes, and this is what makes the court very special. Yes. Yes. Unique. And, and so, uh, uh, when it comes to these six ongoing investigations, so how is it going? I mean, what is the progress? No, we, uh, are we, we going to have a trial at one point? Or? No, we have a trial. We have a, 
we, the court issue, will in some cases will request summons to appear, in some cases will request a warrant. There were 17 arrest warrants, nine summons to appear. Uh, there are five prisoners in jail, all of them. We just prosecute the top people. We never prosecute the lieutenants or mayors mm -hmm. or low-ranking low officers. We just go to the top. And we have in jail the head of two militia from Congo, Champion Bemba, who is the vice president of, mm -hmm. of Congo, Kalitia Barushimana, who was also the, um, the Secretary General of the Force de Liberación de Rwanda. And uh, they are, so they are, there are five individuals in jail, three trials ongoing, and the uh, Lubanga case is finished, so we are going to the closing arguments mm -hmm. in a couple of months. And will be the decision. But, but, but of, of course, for a trial, you see, prosecution is only one side of the story. Then these people are entitled uh, oh, yeah, to, no, no. to defense yeah, yeah. and so on and so on. After we request, so we conduct investigation, we present request for arrest warrant, the judges decide, yeah. and then the judicial proceeding start. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the suspects are provided with defense, the court pay for the defense, in fact and um, they had the right to present evidence and then we go to the confirmation of charges first and then to trial. Yes. So the Lubanga trial started, uh, in fact, because of the right of defense, the judges were asking us to provide documents to defense in the Lubanga case and we explained to the judges that some of the documents were received under confidentiality so we cannot mm -hmm. provide it. So the judges suspended the trial in order to release Lubanga. So imagine the first case, judges issue all to release the, the accused. After we, we, we solve the problem, we keep managing the case, and then we finish the, the trial now. So the first decision will be in a few months. And then a second decision will happen a few months later. And so then he will know what his fate is. And, uh, yeah. and, and this, uh, so uh, of course, uh, in terms of uh, punishment, uh, I, I guess that it is about years in prison. Uh, yeah, we have no death penalty. Yes. So life prison is the, mo is, yeah. is the maximum. Uh, why do you, de you mention when you go after top people? Why uh, simply focusing on top people and not uh, uh, you know, people in, in between? Mm, first, we are analyzing basically massive crimes are committed by organizations. And normal organizations follow the leadership orders. Except Al-Qaeda is a different type. But normally our, our crimes were committed by organizations like armies with top hierarchy. So in this case, when you top, if you stop the top, if you stop Gaddafi, mm -hmm. the others will not do the yeah. same. <laughs> so that's the concept. So we focus in, in the top leaders, we can help to stop the crimes. Yes. And also it's the only way in which a global court could help because our cases are against, we are investigating cases or crimes committed by hundreds yes. of people, or thousands of people. Mm -hmm. So how you can do case against all of them. So we selected the most responsible, okay. we prosecute them, and the rest is after for the national proceedings. Yeah, so uh, the assumption is that once you have, um, once you are uh, after the, the top dogs, uh, the situation in the country somehow improves, and then there is a system through which yes. this uh, middleman can be uh, exactly. uh, tackled. Exactly. That's the idea. In terms of the, uh, the, the cases which are now under investigation on, you know, regarding whether or not you're going to take them on, on board, so uh, uh, can you talk about these cases? I mean, yeah. uh, the first case is Lubanga, Thomas Lubanga. He was the leader of the militia in the RC Congo, in the Turi region, and the charges against him are very focused on child soldiers. Mm -hmm. So we charge him with the crimes to use soldiers, use uh, childs of between less than 15 years old uh, as child soldiers. And then uh, we present the evidence how he used boys and girls of less than 15. The girls were used also to uh, sex slaves. Sex slaves, yes. And, uh, that will be the first case. Then we have a second case against the two leaders of the militia fighting to Lubanga. So paradoxically, these three men now are in jail together. They were mm -hmm. fighting each other, now they're in jail together. And then Katanga and Gujoro, the two commanders who we prosecuted, and we charge them with a specific one, we select one attack in Bogoro, where they kill more than 200 people, and we charge them with the crimes committee in this attack. Then the next case is Champion Bemba, mm -hmm. who was uh, the owner of a militia in Congo, and he was helping um, the President of the Central African Republic, uh, Mr. Patase, 
to control a coup d'etat attempted mm -hmm. by General Bostitze. And then Bemba was there and basically his troops rape and loot all the civilians in the areas where Bostitze troops were. So we are charging with these two crimes, mm -hmm. Champion Bemba. So it's the, it's the first case in which the number of rapes outnumber the number of killings by far. Oh, really? So, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's a massive rape campaign, hundreds of women mm -hmm. raped. And uh, the four case is, uh, okay, the, then we have the Darfur cases. In Darfur, we first conduct an investigation in Ahmed Harun, the military who co- The interpreter? Yes, the military who coordinated attacks in the Darfur region. Uh, who basically, he, they attack the, the, the village, they surround the village, and they kill, rape, uh, forcing them to, to, to escape, and they displace four million people. And uh, the second in command was Ali Kushib, a Chanchewi militia leader who was working for the army. Uh, after that, we prosecuted President Bashir, who gave the order to these two men, and also we pursued the rebels commanders in the in Darfur. So in Darfur, one group of rebel commanders attack the UN, Af no, the African Union peacekeepers bases in Haskanita. And in this case, we convince the rebel commander to appear before the court. Mm -hmm. So they are surrendering themselves oh, vol they voluntarily mm -hmm. to the court. And they are facing the risk to go to jail for many years. Mm -hmm. But they, sh they like to show to Bashir that he had to do the same. So this is also a trial we start very soon. Okay. Uh, this is Darfur. And then you have uh, Kenya, where we basically, in Kenya, in, the, in 2007, basically the members of one community were thinking that the government will make fraud to stay power, stay in power. And then they plan to attack the members of the, the supporters of the government party in their own region, in Rift Valley. And effectively, the government commits fraud, fraud probably, so they, they stay in power. And then this group, led by Mr. Ruto, uh, organized attacks, and they basically force this place 300,000 people, basically, wow. mm -hmm. and kill, and kill. Uh, as a consequence, two days later, we have uh, information that the members of the government decided to retaliate against this group, and they organized a mafia called Mungiki, let the Mungiki went there to kill and rape, and the police support them. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we prosecute uh, two members of the parliament who are the leaders of the Rift Valley attacks, and the Secretary General of the government, the, Minister of the, Prime, the Deputy Prime Minister, and the former chief of police. So, and, and then you have Libya, which is your and Libya last is my last case. last case. So we are requesting the reward against Muammar Gaddafi. Libya is a fascinating case. In Libya, people don't know, but um, Muammar Gaddafi uh, legally has total power, absolute power in Libya. Gaddafi is the uh, is the guide of the revolution. As such, whatever he say, whatever instructions he provide. It has to be, it's binding. Mm -hmm. uh, so he said to the world, to the central bank, give me two billions, central bank had to give two billions. The Congress cannot resist his orders. And because it's a communist country, he also is the owner of the companies. He manages all the companies. So he has all the power. And for 40 years, he was using his power to, to commit crimes and, and attack those who are challenging his authority. In Libya, it's a crime to challenge Gaddafi authority. So, mm -hmm. so but they, when this Tunisia thing happened, uh, Gaddafi was worried about that and decided to give a lesson to these people. And then he shoot his forces, shoot the civilians on the streets, mm -hmm. and then became. Do, 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 do you f do you think that he will end up in front of the ICC? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I think so. Well, uh, it will happen. Uh, I think in a few days the judges will decide on mm -hmm. this issue if they issue an arrest warrant. Oh, you haven't yet decided the... Uh, no, I requested the yes. arrest warrant mm -hmm. to the judges, yes. the judges had to decide. Okay. As soon as they decide, 
and if they issue an arrest warrant, I believe that would make a huge difference. Yeah. And, and then you have all of these uh, cases uh, which you are at the moment evaluating regarding Honduras, Nigeria, yeah. Guinea, and so these are things which are going to come on your desk. Or not, or not. Or not, yes. If yes, they yes. are doing the cases, we should not do yes. it. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you have been prosecutor for eight years now, so uh, you, are, you have plenty of experience to, to assess what are the, the legal challenges, the political challenges, and the, the uh, institutional challenges for the court. So, in summary, what are the, the, the main challenges that the next prosecutor one day will have to, to, to face, in your view? No, the next prosecutor has his own challenges, mm -hmm. her own challenges. We, we were able to conduct proceedings. I remember I was at Harvard when I, when I was appointed, and a colleague of mine told me, look, Luis, it's a great honor, but you have to refuse to be the prosecutor. And I said, why? Mm -hmm. And he said, because uh, without U.S. support, how you can carry out investigation. How can I arrest people? So he said, it will be a shame for you. We'll be nine years in the Hague doing nothing and receiving a salary. It was not true. We were able to conduct investigation, so we, we were able to arrest people. The biggest challenge for me is to harmonize the justice effort with the political efforts. So, because still, in New York, this idea that you have to make negotiations. I remember to, to, graph, to make this graphic. When we request, when we issue, when the court issued the arrest warrant against Ahmed Haroum, I talked to an ambassador here in New York and said, look, if you really ensure that President Bashir arrests Haroum, it's the end of the conflict in Darfur, because uh, no one else will follow illegal orders in Darfur. So you stop the army committing crimes in Darfur. And the ambassador told me, oh, it's a great idea, prosecutor, but we had no idea how to do it. He say, we have uh, two strategies, bombing or nothing. Nothing. In the middle, we don't know. In those days, I was thinking it was a joke. Now, I believe it's just a... It's the truth. It's a description of the reality. Mm -hmm. yeah? That's the way in which international community deal with the conflict. Just, if we are really determined, we send troops and bombing. If not, we just try to negotiate and appease them. Now, it's a new instruments, a new institution, and it's still so new that it's difficult for the state to understand how to play with us. But and, it's and, working. And, and why does it make your, your, your job more difficult, this kind of uh, uh, strategy having to do with either bombing or trying to peace? Uh, why does it make your job more difficult? Because um, we don't need neither the bombing or, or the peacing in particular, because for in, in Darfur case, some states were um, worried after they referred the case, when we finally we present the case and issue the requirement, some states were <coughs> trying to negotiate with Bashir, so they, for them it was complicated, mm -hmm. because they, someone explained to me, in Argentina, in the 70s, we have to convince the dictatorship to not to kill so many. Now we have to convince Bashir to go to jail. Our job is more difficult. Mm -hmm. okay, but that is a real issue to protect civilians, stop the criminals. Mm. So the lack of consensus, the lack of the law has to be automatic, and everyone follow. And it's not the case in international relations. Mm -hmm. That's why this, I think, is the biggest problem. Yeah. But it's changing. It's changing. In, in eight years, you have seen an evolution. Totally. Yeah. And, and, and so you, you think that uh, the ability to, to prosecute these people and therefore to, to, to bring them to justice is a key ingredient of, of a peace process. It's a new way to manage the conflict, recognizing the facts and stopping the criminal. That mm -hmm. is a new way. And, and it's, it's working in front and suppose it's Bemba. Champion Bemba ran for, compete for the elections in, in Congo. In fact, he was the number two in the election. And some people were thinking, oh, he could be, we, ne we need Bemba to be the opposition party in, in Congo. We arrest him and nothing happened in Cong bad in Congo, on the contrary. So it's important that the law is implemented in order to have a better quality of life. How do you see the, the, the future of the court as we are ending our conversation? One of, one of my staff, say, when she did the question, said, oh, the court in 50 years will be a museum. The court will be a place where people will come to see how in the past humanity was managing conflict. I hope that's true. I see the court is, in the first eight years, established itself and is managing serious conflict. I hope the court helped the world to, ma to reduce this conflict, to reduce the quantity and the intensity of this conflict. 
and probably with the court could be with other type of conflict. But uh, I think the court is very useful for these crimes committed by people in government, because mm -hmm. then to win the government you need legitimacy, and the court interferes with your legitimacy. So that's why in this peculiar kind of uh, type of crime, the court mm -hmm. could be very useful. It undermines the, the claim to legitimacy of these people. Of course, yeah. destroy that. Yeah. And so perhaps as a way to finish our conversation, a reference to your earlier work uh, uh, as a prosecutor in Argentina. And in fact, as, a, as I recall, in the 90s, uh, in the 1980s, you served as an assistant prosecutor in the, in the trial against uh, army commanders involved in what was called at the time the, the, the dirty word, La Guerra Sucia, mm -hmm. uh, which took place between 1976 and, and 1982. So this experience in Argentina, did it teach you something important about your work today? Oh, did, it, did it help you to, to do your job uh, uh, at the global level? First, help me to understand how to investigate cr massive crimes mm -hmm. with no police. And second, teach me to understand that everyone will decide me <laughs> and I, keep, I have to yeah. should keep doing the same. In Argentina, when I started to investigate these crimes, many people were furious with me. Even one of my uncles was a colonel, he stopped to talk to me. So that's normal. When mm -hmm. you are doing this, you know some people will be happy, some people will be very happy, but you have to keep doing mm -hmm. So at the time, the, the, the criticisms were national, now you, you have to have global. your global criticisms. Exactly. So it's, 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 it's tough. No, it's okay. Yeah. It, it, no, it's, okay. it's okay, it's normal. And mm -hmm. I think. Uh, uh, that it mean that we are doing our job, mm -hmm. that we are affecting people who were thinking it's okay to commit massive atrocities to gain power, yeah. and it's not okay.